All right, so let's move on to religious practices. Uh, indigenous uh, religious religion uh, practitioners in include, included Habilists, uh, diviners who attended to the spiritual needs and millets of both individuals and communities. Um, in most cases, other clairvoyant powers were employed by chiefs for advice and prophecy. Historically, Christian missionaries and traditional diviners have been enemies, but this has led has not prevented the uh, dramatic growth of the hybrid Afro-Christian churches. Uh, religious movements, prophetism, and spiritual healing alongside mainstream Christianity. Other important religions include Buddhism, Islam, Hinduism. For the Afrikaners, the, the Dutch Reformed Church has provided spiritual and organized, organizational foundation for their nationalistic culture, politics, and ideology. Okay, so let's move on to rituals um, in and holy places. All religions and ethnic sub-national groups have founded shrines uh, to their traditional where monument, uh, where monument events have occurred. Their leaders are buried or miracles are believed to have happened. The grave of Sheikh Omar, for example, a seventh a seventh a seventh uh, century leader a 17th century leader of resistance to dutch rule in the east indian indies who was transported to the cape and became an early leader of the malay malay community is sacred to cape muslims africaners regard the site of the battle of the blood river uh, Nkome, in 1838 as sacred because their leader andres peritorius per Peritorius made a covenant with their God promising perpetual devotion if victory over the vastly more numerous Zulu army was achieved. The long intergroup conflict over the land itself has led to the uh, sacralization of many, many sites that are well remembered and frequently visited by the great many South Africans of all backgrounds. So let's move on to death and afterlife. In addition, uh, in addition to beliefs in the social and afterlife, um, afterlife of the varying world religions in South Africa, continued belief in and consultation with family ancestors remains strong among Black Africans. Among the important shrines where the ancestors are said to have caused miracles are the caves of the Nkokomoi and Mantualeng and in the Eastern Free State, both sites of healing sacred to the Basoto and the holy city of, of Nkumpamkameni in KwaZulu-Natal. Built by Zulu Afro-Christian prophet and founder of the Nazareth Jerusalem Church, uh, Isaiah Shembe, uh, by the, uh, built by the founder of the Nazareth um, Jerusalem Church, Isaiah Shembe, in 1961. Formal communal graveyards, not a feature of pre-colonial African culture, has uh, has since become a famous has since become a focus of ancestral veneration of rootedness in the land. Uh, disused graves and ancestral shrines have most recently figured uh, have most recently figured in the land restitution claims of export created African communities lacking for more deeds of title for their homes. Let's look at let's look at the medicine. There is a first class but limited modern healthcare sector for those who have medical coverage or the money to pay for the treatment. Government subsidized public hospitals and clinics are overstretched or understaffed and are struggling to deal with the needs of the majority of the population that has under that ha, that was underserved during the minor, the white minority rule a highly developed traditional medicine sector of the herbalists and the diviners provides treatment for physical and psycho spiritual illnesses to millions in the black population including some people who also receive treatment from modern health professionals and families south africa has a high hiv level infection and if successful strategies for aids prevention and 
uh, care are implemented, 25% of the country's young uh, women will die before the age of 30. I think that has changed. Let's look at the circular celebrations. Uh, circular celebrations and public holidays are much more numerous than religi religious celebrations. The old, uh, the old, cal the ho old holiday calendar cons consisting of commemorations of milestones in the history of colonial settlement, conquest, and political dominance has not been abandoned. In the service of political reconciliation, old days such as December the 16th, which commemorates the victory of 800 African settlers and their black servants over 400 Zulu at the Battle of Blood River in 1838, is now celebrated as Reconciliation Day. Holidays commemorating significant events in the black struggle for their political liberation include Human Rights Day, marking uh, Human Rights Day, uh, your pardon um. human rights day marking the shooting of the dead of 61 black pass law protesters by the police in Sharp sharpsville on march the 21st in 1916 and youth day uh, recalling the beginning of the Soweto uprising when police opened fire on black school children protesting the use of Africaners as a medium of instruction in their township schools in June, June the 16th, 1976. Other holidays emphasize the social advancement, gra uh, advancement guaranteed by the new constitution, such as Women's Day, which commemorates the march by women of all groups to protest the extension of the laws of the past laws to women in Pretoria on August 9, 1956. Now let's look at the art and humanities, support of the arts. Pre-colonial African cultures produce a wide range of art, artistic artifacts for both use of be, uh, for use and beauty as clothing and a personal endowment. Endowment, beadwork, back, back basketry, po uh, pottery, and external house decorations and design. Today, these traditions are not only continued, but have developed in a new, have been developed in a new as well as established form of uh, ex exquis exquisitely fashioned black and popular craft work and even painting. Among, among the most famous is the geometric house painting designed by Debere people. Urban South African has highly developed traditions in the full range of arts and humanities, genres and disciplines, long supported by government and the liberal universities. Among the most prominent in Africa, during the colonial, the colonial period, these traditions spread to the non-European population groups who also produced artists, artists, scholars and public intellectuals of re-owned of re despite the obstacles deliberately placed in their path by the white apartheid culture authorities. Building on the work of artists in exile such as painter Gerard Sekoto, uh, painters and graphic artists vividly expressed the struggles and suffering of black South Africans during the 1960s, 1970s and 1980s. Social isolation and poverty along with which vocations of re regenerated African folk culture have inspired graphic artists of all backgrounds in the transformation in the transformational 1990s. Most recently other uh, pressing social concerns have taken priority over the arts and humanities and both public and private su support have dwindled while the government struggles to make uh, the once racially exclusive exclusive arts and education facilities accessible to all arts councils have experienced severe reductions in the funding and many once vibrant artists at institutions are closed or threatened with closure the government sponsored Johannesburg by 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 Biennial arts festival has not yet has yet to attract a significant audience let's look at the literature the country has long had two writers. Has the country has a, has had 
important writers of different of different cultural ethnic backgrounds black uh, literature thrived under the adverse conditions of apartheid but today there is no black writer playwright or journalist with this with the stature of Iskaya Mpahalali and Alex Laguma from the 1950s through the 1970s. The white population continues to produce world-class literary, literary arts, however, including Nobel Prize winner Nadine Gomier, twice, twice Book Prize winner M.J. Kotze, and distinguished bilingual African novelist Andre Bay. Let's look at the graphic arts. Graphic arts with rural uh, folk background uh, who have had the transition in the contemporary world such as the renowned Peter and renowned painter Helen um, Sibidi have found a ready international market South Africa to produce a number of world-class art and documentary photographers in the second half of the 20th century whose work vividly evokes all aspects of this diverse powerful conflictual and divided society. Among, among such photographs are the elders and the school, David Goldblatt and Peter Mugabane, followed by new talents such as Santu Oken. Let's move on to the performing arts. Theatre during the 1960s, 70s and 80s, a thriving formal elite and informal popular performing arts, has recently fallen on hard times. Even Johannesburg even Johannesburg, the urban culture center of the country, has witnessed the closure of several major uh, turned down theater complexes that are now surrounded by urban decay and the virtual disappearance of popular black township theater. The Grand State Theater Complex in Pretoria has recently been closed due to its insolvency and mismanagement. New um, opportunities and interesting, uh, in interesting choreographers are appear appearing in the field of contemporary black dance but audiences and subjects and budgets are still painfully small south africans four greatest uh, symphony orchestras have either been dissolved or are threatened with dissolution alternatively popular music particularly among black south african musicians and audiences whether li in live performances recording or or the increasingly varied uh, broadcast industry is thriving in the new era and holds out great potential in both artistic and uh, financial expansion. South Africa is, is possessed of video and digital artists with the excellent professional training and great talent, but there is only, on, only a limited market for their work within the country. Local television produ production provides them with some money, some employment but the south african um film industry is uh, more <laughs> wow whatever that means uh the very low pace of economic growth and the high and increasing levels of unemployment and taxation has created um an unfavorable environment for art, art, artist, artist, artistic and intellectual development in the new non racial society one sector in which both artists and financial progresses is occurring is the growth of arts and the performance festivals and the greatest of these is the national arts festival held every year in graham's town eastern cape drawing large audiences to a feast of the best new work in here film serious music um lecture programs and visual arts and crafts other local festivals have sprung up after the example of grand Hamstown and all all have achieved some measure of success and performance in the national culture calendar let's look at the state of the physical and social sciences uh, since the 1920s the universities have graduated uh, world-class professionals in the physical and social sciences rapid democrat democratization has stressed the higher education system and the public and private funding for the social sciences has declined at a time when the society is facing social and economic crisis. The physical, um, the physical sciences have, fired, have, have, have fared better with the opening of new technical institutions and the expansion of professionally oriented science education programs at the universities. The crisis in primary and secondary education has lowered the quality of the 
entrance of institutions of higher education and lack of economic growth has created an inability to absorb highly trained graduates and a skills shortage as those graduates are attracted by better opportunities abroad. All right, so I believe we've come to the end of our series as far as South Africa goes. If you made it this far, thank you so much. If you watching this part, make sure you haven't missed part, uh, the previous part. Once again, this has been your story, Christine, with Exhibit Africa Inc. Um, courtesy, uh, this project by courtesy of Ex Exhibit Africa Ubuntu Initiative compiled by every culture.com until our next uh, series as we cover another beautiful country from the from the continent of Africa we're still continuing with our CS uh, series so most likely we might be going to Sudan we'll see okay so I'll see you in our next series bye for now don't forget to subscribe cheers <laughs>